All right, so when I was 10, I went to a summer day camp in the suburbs of Massachusetts. And on day one of this camp, I saw this girl. Now, not only did I see her, but I saw her seeing me seeing her. And I knew, I knew it was only a matter of time. You know what I'm saying? Well, at lunchtime, she sent her friend over to me. Hey, Paige wants you to be her boyfriend. I'm like, I know, I saw her seeing me from across the way. You tell Paige, she's my boo now. And so a glorious relationship began. I would look at her from across the kickball field and smile. She would look at me from across the arts and crafts room and smile. One time we even smiled while passing each other on the archery range. And then it happened just before pool time. This is still just day one? Still day one. Just before pool time, I see her walking back over to me. Paige says it's not working out. Oh, the heartbreak. Love, thy cruel mistress. Why have you done this to me? I literally never said a word to Paige while she was my girlfriend, but her rejection of me still made me question if there was something wrong with me. I didn't even know this girl, and she definitely didn't know me, but I still hated feeling rejected by her. And I'm willing to bet that I'm not the only person in the room who's experienced rejection like that, right? I mean, whether it was a crush or a friend, a parent or a complete stranger, most of us have probably experienced moments here and there where we wanted someone to accept us and they instead turned their back on us. And that just doesn't feel good. Rejection doesn't feel good. In fact, I'm willing to bet that fear of rejection is a major reason why many of us won't cross the road for others. You know, all throughout this series, we've said that crossing the road can refer to any adventure that God is calling you into, whether that's repairing a relationship with an ex-friend, starting a new club at school, reaching out to the lonely kid, trying out for a particular team, or really anything. I mean, I could sit here for hours listing examples and never even scratch the surface of all the different ways God might be calling each of us to cross the road. But while I may not know all of the ways God is calling each of us into the adventure, I do know one way he's calling all of us into adventure as followers of Jesus. See, Jesus was super clear before he left earth that the number one adventure he was calling all of his followers into was to share the message of the gospel with others that God is calling each and every one of us into that adventure every single day. And for many of us in the room, for those of us in the room who are chickens, that's terrifying. Because sharing your faith in today's society feels like a surefire way to experience rejection. It doesn't matter if it's your friend or your teammate or a complete stranger, sharing the gospel with others often feels scary. If it's a stranger, you might be afraid that they'll judge you and think, oh, you're some kind of weirdo freak. And then you imagine them telling everyone in school or everyone in the neighborhood that you're some kind of religious nutcase. If it's a teammate, you might be afraid that you'll ruin the chemistry on the team, right? That suddenly your teammate will look at you differently and the whole season will be weird. And if it's a friend, you might be afraid of losing them. Maybe they'll get angry that you're pushing your religion on. Maybe they'll get weirded out and question whether or not they should even be friends with you. Or maybe they'll be nice about it at first, but then be kind of awkward around you for weeks afterward. And at the root of all of these fears lies the fear of rejection. So why didn't the chicken cross the road? Because he knew he might experience pain along the way. And as we all know, rejection can be just as painful as getting hit by a car. I mean, not literally, but you get it. But as we've discovered throughout the series, Jesus doesn't simply call us into adventure. He calls us to follow him into adventure. So my hope today is that as we see adventure through the lens of the gospel, we'll feel encouraged to be chickens of valor, even in the face of rejection. Let's jump in. We talked about this a lot in week two of this series, but Jesus knew what it was to experience acceptance from friends. Right? And, and in case you missed that week of the series, that episode in the series, what I mean by that is that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit lived in perfect harmony and total acceptance of one another since before the beginning of everything. And that perfect harmony and that oneness between Jesus and his best friends has never been disrupted in all of eternity, except for one moment. In that moment of Jesus' rejection has enormous implications for you and for me and for our fear 
of rejection. Jesus' disciple Matthew recorded this moment, and it happened during Jesus' crucifixion. He had been hanging on the cross for hours already, right? Experiencing emotional pain from being relentlessly mocked and spit on. Wow, that sounds really similar to the emotional pain that you experienced with what's her name. Yet what Jesus went through might have even been a little bit worse, if you can imagine it. And on top of the emotional pain, Jesus was experiencing the worst physical pain imaginable. And then right before Jesus dies, this moment happens. We're in Matthew 27, 45. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? In this moment, with the God the Son hanging on a cross, moments from death, he experiences a worse form of rejection than you and I could ever imagine. Is it worse? Than yes, it's worse than what happened to me and Paige. God the Father, who Jesus had experienced perfect unity, friendship, and an acceptance with since before the beginning of everything, right, breaks that bond with God the Son. And this is easily the deepest form of rejection that has ever been experienced by anyone ever. I mean, can you imagine what Jesus was feeling in that moment? To, to have God break the perfect bond that had been established for eternity up until that point. I mean, here's Jesus literally being tortured to death to accomplish a mission that was God's idea in the first place. And in Jesus' darkest hour, when he needs God the most, God rejects him. And the question we have to ask is, why? Why did God reject Jesus in that moment? You know why? God rejected Jesus in this moment so he would never have to reject you. Think of it this way. For all of eternity past, Jesus' character was like this shirt. Pure, clean, flawless. That's why he and God the Father got along so well. They were both perfect, right? You and I, on the other hand, our character is a lot more like this. Uh, sure, we have moments where we're cute and we're funny, but at the end of the day, sin leads us to do dirty, poopy things. And God the Father rejects poop emojis. It's just who he is. It's part of his nature. He can't tolerate the stank. When Jesus went to the cross, he took your poopy character and he stuck it on top of his perfect, flawless character and became the embodiment of sin. And as a result, there came a moment when Jesus was on the cross where God the Father had to reject this, where God the Son had to experience the wrath and rejection of God the Father because he had become the embodiment of sin. The rejection that Jesus experienced from the mocking crowds, I mean, that was hard, but it was nothing compared to the spiritual rejection that he experienced from the God of the universe. It was agonizing, but it was necessary, and he did it for you. Jesus crossed the road for you. Jesus experienced God's rejection so you would never have to. So I know you're afraid of rejection. I, I, I get that, really, I do. Jesus does too, because he experienced rejection and it was awful. But no matter what any human being can possibly say to you in response to you sharing your faith, your creator loves you and your creator accepts you unconditionally. Like because your faith is in Jesus, you will always, always have a God who accepts you and loves you even when someone here on earth rejects you. And here's the, here's the best part, this is my favorite part. When you become a chicken of valor, when you choose to cross the road for people around you, when you summon the courage to share your faith with someone that God has placed in your life, you're giving them the opportunity to experience the same unconditional acceptance from God that you've experienced. Say it in a different way, man, they still don't get it. Like, okay, when you share your faith, you are loving them as Jesus has loved you because you are risking rejection so that they don't have to. You are risking being rejected by them so that they don't have to be rejected by God. Here's the point. When you see adventure through the lens of the gospel, you won't fear rejection. Over the course of your journey walking with God, you'll hear his voice calling you into a lot of different adventures. Now, some of them might be small and easy adventures, and some of them might be enormous and difficult adventures, but every single one of them is meant to make you better, to make others around you 
better and to help you grow closer to your creator. So I know it's scary crossing the road. Right? We are chickens after all. But when you see adventure through the lens of the gospel, you'll be the kind of chicken who chooses to cross the road when God calls you to. When you see through the lens of the gospel, you'll be a chicken of valor.